1616, Sir Thomas Dale, appointed by Governor Delaware as his deputy in absence, is recalled to England. Dale appoints George Yardley in his place. He's only 28 years old. His promotion gives Yardley, a commoner by birth, the confidence to ask the widow Temperance Flowerdew for her hand in marriage. She's a person who comes from a world of resources that she knows how to manage. She's gonna be a really great catch for him. Who knows, they might've been desperately in love with each other. Uh, that, that could be true too, but for her, this is a, a guy on the way up. He's a resourceful man. I will. To safeguard the peace with the native people, one of Yardley's first actions is to arrange a meeting with the man who will soon succeed the aging Chief Powhatan, his younger brother, Opie Chonkano. It's likely that Yardley and Opie Chonkano had discourse multiple times. There was enough of a relationship for Yardley to be granted a tract of land in one of the territorial areas that Opie Chonkano controlled. Now, a landowner and a leader, Yardley is determined to make the colony a success, and he knows just what to do. In 1618, when he's recalled to England, he offers his vision to Sir Edwin Sands, one of the leading officers at the Virginia Company. Put an end to martial law, give the settlers the land they have earned from seven years of labor, and a say in how they use it. With tobacco, the new gold, everyone can make money, including the Virginia Company. The result is a sweeping set of reforms that will profoundly impact Virginia's future. But then, shocking news arrives. On his way back to resume his post as governor, Lord Delaware has died. For the Virginia Company, there's only one man who can replace him. Yardley was the guy with the skills at the top. You know, he's the elite guy who is running the government who can make it work. But governorships are reserved for noblemen, and Yardley is just a commoner. The company then came up with, they thought, a very clever plan. Just have the king create him, a, a member of the aristocracy, gentry aristocracy, by knighting him. On November 24th, 1618, King James I, orders Sir George Yardley to rise. The tailor's son completes his meteoric ascent. Both Sir George and Lady Temperance must have wondered how their stars had aligned in such a fashion to propel them from middle rank into the highest rank of society. In April 1619, Governor Yardley and his wife sail back to Virginia. His return will bring the first glimmer of democracy to the earliest English settlement in America.